We'll begin the uh, press conference this morning. The mayor will begin, followed by our police chief, then the FBI, the district attorney's office, and then the U.S. attorney's office. We've been working and coordinating with all local and state uh, and, and federal officials, and so the mayor will give us uh, the beginnings of the uh, updates on this press conference. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, chief Allen, I'm going to turn it over to Chief Allen for all the specifics. The outpouring of support we've had from across this nation and across this world has been phenomenal. El Paso is a resilient city. This will not define us, and we will move ahead. Let me turn it over to Chief Allen. Thank you, Mayor. Basically, the facts of yesterday that were reported are still in place. Nothing's really changed. Uh, we're beginning to remove the bodies from the scene so that uh, the scene can be alleviated and turned over to the public again. Uh, Later today, we'll be releasing the mug shot of the individual that's been arrested here. And with that, basically, if you have any questions, uh, we'll uh, provide that information to you after everyone here speaks in turn, all right? Okay. Thank you. Good morning, Emerson Bowie. Uh, to date, the FBI continues to look at a number of different uh, potential crimes to be charged. We have initiated our domestic terrorism hate crimes fusion cell. Uh, that fusion cell is comprised of agents, intelligence analysts from the field office, as well as other places in the United States and at our headquarters level, uh, experts from our criminal investigation division, as well as our counterterrorism uh, division, who look at all the various uh, pieces of evidence and they correlate that information to ensure that we're sharing properly and we can pursue a criminal investigation, i.e. potentially uh, civil rights hate crime, along with any potential domestic terrorism charges that might be possible as well, and ensure that both cases can run parallel. Uh, we also, I would just like to remind everyone that anyone that has information uh, regarding this incident can go to our website that we have posted, HTP, uh, colon slash slash www.fbi.gov El Paso shooting. That website will allow you to load any video that you may have captured uh, during this incident and provide information if you have a different additional information to provide us in our efforts in this investigation. We have completed three search warrants outside of this jurisdiction uh, and we continue to look at all other avenues and uh, investigative leads as they are coming in. I'm Jaime Esparza, I'm the district attorney. Uh, we, uh, it's a very difficult time um, for our community. It's really with a heavy heart that I talk to you. But we are in the process of working together with uh, all law, enforce law enforcement, especially the El Paso Police Department, the Texas Department of Public Safety, and the FBI. Also with the U.S. Attorney's Office, we will proceed with the investigation uh, I can tell you from the outset, the charge, the state charge is capital murder. And so he is eligible for the death penalty. Uh, we will seek the death penalty. The, the loss of life is so great. We certainly have never seen this in our community. Uh, we are uh, a very safe community. We pride ourselves on the fact that we're so safe. And um, certainly this community is rocked and shocked and saddened by uh, what has happened here uh, yesterday. But we will proceed in an orderly fashion and, and certainly uh, we'll, we'll get ready uh, for trial and, and the prosecution of this person. But um, if I left you with anything, it wouldn't be what we're going to do forward. I would ask you to, to think of the 20 lives that were lost. Those were persons in our community and we will miss them. And all of, the, all of the victims who either suffered physical or emotional uh, impact from what happened, uh, we are just not a community that, that, that really, uh, this is not us. We are uh, like, the, like the bright sunshine today, that is us. We are a really good and loving community. Uh, but uh, we will hold him accountable. Thank you. My name is John Bash. I'm the United States Attorney for the Western District of Texas, which covers 
El Paso. My grandmother has lived here for 50 years. She's 91. Since it was a much smaller community, I don't think she's ever seen anything like this in this community. My mom grew up here. My dad went to college here. I lived here when I was very young. Um, it's been devastating for the community. I've been unbelievably impressed by our first responders, by the DA's office, by our police, FBI, um, in the work they've conducted. We had a very long night last night um, working this case. I've been in close consultation with Attorney General Barr. Uh, we are conducting a methodical investigation with our partners, a careful investigation, but with a view towards bringing federal hate crimes charges under 18 U.S.C. 249 and federal firearms charges, which carry a penalty of death. Um, we are seriously considering those charges. We're going to conduct a methodical and careful investigation with a view towards those charges. We are also treating this as a domestic terrorist case. There's a statutory definition of domestic terrorism at 18 U.S.C. 2331. This meets it. It appears to be designed to intimidate a civilian population, to say the least. We are treating it as a domestic terrorism case. And we're going to do what we do to terrorists in this country, which is deliver swift and certain justice. With that, I think we'll turn it over for questions. So um, I'd failed to re um, recognize everyone in the room. Um, the commander with the Department of Public Safety, and my name is Tommy Gonzalez, city manager. I'd like to send a message to the families, and that is that our um, first responders are working diligently to uh, unify the families uh, and, and get the bodies uh, back to them as quickly as possible. Uh, we're um, not, we're expending all resources in order to make that happen. Uh, we'll open it up to, for questions now. Can I ask you, yesterday there was some hesitation to absolutely positively say you believe it's a hate crime. Are you closer to that now, or can you now say that you are virtually certain this is a hate crime? Basically, from the manifesto that we first saw, we have to attribute that manifesto directly to him based on that information in that manifesto. That's where that came from. And so we're going down that road. It's beginning to look more solidly like that is the case. And a follow-up question, if I could, sir, to any of you. We spoke to some people who were quite distressed last night. They've not heard from family members who were there. Is that being resolved right now? I, I know you feel we, a heavy heart for them too, but what, what, what is their situation now? The people we've got a reunification center that's turned into a grieving center over uh, in the central area where the event took place pretty much. Uh, and as a matter of fact on that, I'd like to ask the media to be respectful of the families right now. We've been getting complaints that the media have been overburdening them with uh, questions when actually they're more concerned about finding out about their loved ones. So we ask you respectfully to uh, abide by their wishes. But with that being said, we're looking at all responders and everyone who has been on the ground participating in this event. We're providing them references to uh, alleviate their uh, suffering. Chief, let me ask you, has the suspect been cooperative? Yes, he has. You used the term horrific yesterday to describe the scene. There's not words you can place to say something like that. You know, you have to see it for yourself. When I first got into this job, I never knew there was an odor to blood, but there is. And until you firsthand see that, my description of it as far as horrific will be unserving as far as what that scene looks like. So I can't tell you what that means other than for the normal individual that doesn't have to deal with that on a day-to-day -day basis, it will leave an impression that you will never forget. I'll just leave it at that. The suspect is being cooperative. What has he told you so far? Well, I can't get into the details of that. Again, we have to be respectful of the fact that this person still has his rights. And even though he's cooperating, we still have to keep that in play to make sure the investigation goes forward successfully. Ask NBC News. You said that uh, you said that the suspect purchased the firearm legally. Do we know where this rifle was purchased? Not at this time. Uh, I'm sure we'll find that out later with uh, the help of our federal authorities. But right now, those are uh, particulars about the investigation that I think that we need to maintain within our purview.
Well, see, if you can't really be seen anything, do it. I'm sorry? Was he allowed to carry that weapon specifically? Is he what? Was he allowed to open carry that weapon? That's allowable in the state of Texas, yes. So up until the point he opened fire, he was not committing any kind of crime? Technically. Uh, of course, uh, a normal individual seeing that type of weapon might be alarmed, but uh, technically it was in the realm of the law. Well, I'm sorry? Clarification there. The surrender yesterday, just you described briefly, can you give us more details about where that was, how they found it, and, and how that interaction took place? Well, approaching or responding officers, I believe the Texas Department of Public Safety was involved in that particular arrest. Uh, when he saw the officers approaching the scene where he was at, he basically surrendered. And that was over on the farther west side from the low shooting site. Was he in a vehicle? I believe he was. I can't confirm that as a matter of fact, but uh, that's where I believe he was. What with the FBI, of those three search warrants that were outside of this jurisdiction, can you tell us specifically where those are? Uh, they occurred in the Dallas area uh, where the individual uh, in question is from. And I believe there was some media coverage of those residents when we did it. So, uh, again, uh, we continue to do the investigation. It's not going to give any particular detail as to what was found and things like that. But a lot can transpire in 24 hours. And uh, as we continue the investigation to gather and information. Can I just get some clarification? <coughs> I know you can't give us specifics, but is it substantively cooperative? I mean, someone could just say yes and no, that's my name. Is, is, it, is there substance to the cooperation? I understand it's a tricky area. Yes, he was uh, forthcoming with information. Uh, he uh, basically didn't hold anything back. Particular questions were asked, and he responded in uh, the way it needed to be answered. A lot, of people, a lot of people have said regarding the domestic terrorism. Uh, people in the public have said, you know, that's what they thought it was from from the moment they first heard about it. But can you walk us through the process of understanding how it becomes a legal definition and why there is a process that uh, takes time before you declare it that? Well, there's a statutory definition of domestic terrorism under federal law. Can you all hear me? There's a statutory definition of domestic terrorism under federal law. I think I mentioned earlier 18 U.S.C. 2331, and that definition matters for a variety of purposes. It has factors. I won't go through all of them, but the key factor here is it appears to be an intent to coerce or intimidate a civilian population. Uh, that's met here. It, the attack, from what we know in the public record, certainly appears to be intimidated intended to intimidate or coerce a civilian population. So we're treating it as a domestic terrorism case as uh, the FBI special agent in charge said they have activated the domestic terrorist fusion cell at the FBI. And so uh, we're going to treat it that way going forward. Los cargos de, 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 de este incidente son homicidio capital y nosotros en la oficina vamos a pedir uh, a, o pedir por el pena de muerte. Uh, es un uh, incidente tan horrible que pues en esta comunidad no estamos acostumbrados a tener algo así en, en el paso. Y, uh, yo también como el jefe del policía, yo fui uh, al Walmart, yo vi uh, todo que pasó y y, esto, y, 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 y y yo sé que el pena de muerte es algo muy fuerte, pero en esta ocasión es algo que uh, es necesario. Él perdió el derecho para estar entre nosotros ayer. ¿Ya se sabe cómo llegó al paso de Dallas? Sí. ¿Y yo expande en poder hablar sobre eso? Yeah. Um, we're going to close out. We're going to close out the press conference, and I'd just like to say that we want to thank all, everyone who's reached out to City of El Paso, um, and also want to send our condolences to Dayton, Ohio, and for what they're grieving uh, as well. Uh, again. The first responders, we cannot say enough with the way they responded and the way they handled this. Thank you. And if you could, media, if you could make sure you get as much information to uh, those loved ones that have been impacted. Thank you.